Right now we're engaged in a series of lessons that are all trying to get us to understand um, how light scatters and reflects. Um, so the students first learned how we see. And so after we kind of mastered how we see something to begin with, now we're looking at how the things we see, why they look different. And so our focus right now is on why do we see ourselves in a mirror? Today's objective is really a, we've done a lot of work and now as scientists, as a scientific community, we need to be able to vocalize, like what do we know? How can we state what we've learned from the evidence that we've collected? So that's our objective is to really firmly state the scientific principles of what we've learned. Today, in class, we're going to start by doing a little bit of brainstorming, okay, to kind of get your minds warmed up to what we're going to be doing. And so if you look up here, um, I want you to respond to these kind of questions. So I'm going to explain it to you, and then I'll, this will stay up here so you can look at it, okay? So let's pretend for a minute that you um, have a little sibling, or maybe some of you are not pretending, okay? And say you went home and you were going to tell your sibling about, like, how stuff works, the stuff we've been learning about. And say they want to know, like, well, how is it that you see yourself in a mirror? Or how is it that, like, I see anything around me? Do you understand what I just said? Thumbs up? Okay, so what I'd like you to do, in your books, can I have your book, honey? In your books, there's a couple of blank pages. So we're going to take advantage of one of those blank pages. On page 104, it's just blank. I want you to use the blank space. You can draw, you can write. But pretend for a minute that someone's sitting next to you. What would you say to them? What would you do to try and explain what we've been learning about scattering and reflection? So starting with a, a sentence starter like, when I, we see a reflection when, or we see a reflection because, or we see an object because. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. This is up here to help you. I'm going to give you about three minutes to work on this, and this is just to get us in the right mind space before we get started on today. We're kind of at the end point of this target, but we're not done at all with the standard. So we're kind of in a, a middle point for the standard. We still have some other behavior about light that we haven't quite understood yet. But if we go too far without really capturing what we know, it's difficult to come back and put it all together. So we're sort of at an end point for scattering and reflection, but we're at a midpoint for all the things that light can do when it interacts with an object. All right. So we did this little brainstorming activity because it's supposed to kind of help us get ready for today. So you engage in some really good discussion with your groups, okay? So what are we discussing? You guys have been working really hard to try and answer some of these questions up here, right? Okay. And we started kind of trying to figure out like how does a mirror work? Like how is it that we can see ourselves? What's reflection? So that was kind of where we started, right? Okay. Now, as a scientific community, you guys had questions. We did a lot of investigating, right? Right? What did we investigate? What did we do? Anna, what do you think? Oh, uh, we, we showed us the model of how things reflect, and we did okay. the experiment where we uh, had the flashlight and the light sensor, and okay. we moved it to all the different positions, and we did the same with the paper. Okay. Mag, do you want to add to that? We, um, we learned how light interacts with mirrors mm -hmm. and paper. Okay. And so we, we did some investigating, and then did we try and make sense of what we saw? Okay, did it take a little digging? Yes. Yeah, we had to kind of dig and figure out what all of it meant. Like, was there a pattern? Was there not a pattern? What does a pattern mean? Right? Are you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've done that, I think, and I think you probably agree with me, I think you're ready as a community to kind of say, okay, now that we have some evidence, what do we know? What principle for science have we really figured out? Are you guys with me? So, you know, our scientific principle wall, we got to add to it today. We're going to work together to come up with what do we know and how can we communicate that out? What should we say? Okay, so for the first row, we are focusing on how does light scatter, okay? That's our first row. That's what you're going to talk about now. And so in the box that says scientific principle notes, I want you to talk as a group and come up with what are some bullets, what are some ideas that you think should go up on our, on our scientific principle board. Do you understand what I just said? Okay, so this is just the how, the why. What do we know about light scattering? How does light scatter? Like what actually happens? And why does that happen? Why does the light scatter? So the stuff that we've talked about and we know, try and put it into some statements together. Do you understand the first part? Okay. Then the second part where it says evidence. What do I mean by evidence? Go ahead, Isabel. Um, things that prove that the notes that we took are accurate. Okay, so the stuff that proves that what we're writing down is accurate. What else? Anything you want to add? Uh, like, like a book or something. The book can be evidence, right? Like if we read something that other people have published, we can use that as evidence too. Yes, Maya. Our experience, our data from the experience. Okay, all right. Evidence. 
You guys feel good about that? Yeah. I want you to take those things that your classmates just said, and I'd love for you to put down like those bits and parts that you know as evidence that makes you know that what you're writing here is on track. So can you tell me what you have so far, and then I'll ask you to think about what I want you to think about next. How, when it, it happens, when it hits a rough surface. Okay, when it hits a rough surface, so that was the first thing you guys said? Okay. Like you'd have to judge whether it's a rough surface when you magnify it. Okay, because sometimes we can't see, right? How do you know that? Let's start there. How do you know what you just said? Oh, uh, um, page 60. Because it is rough. Yeah, yeah, 63. Okay, so why don't you write down what was it on 63 that you actually did? Oh, the reading? 64, the reading. Okay, so why don't you write down in the evidence section something about, like, I know this because. Tell me what happens. How would you describe? Like, it's a rough surface and light's hitting it, so what happens? What, what happens as a result of it? Can you guys talk about that a little bit? Like, what does the light actually do? Okay? All right, can you talk about it? All right, go for it. Light bounces off of the object and goes into the eye. Like, yeah, like we have in our book, because this is light surface light. It just reflects. Yeah, like glass. Definitely over this um, shift to take on next generation science standards, our, our Illinois standards, um, I just don't think questioning meant the same thing to us. I mean, questioning was a technique that you used as a teacher to, you know, move your students from one place of knowledge to another. Sure, we did that, but never in the, the setting that we are now where it's not, it's not about just moving them, it's about really getting them to question the world around them and search for those answers that scientists have done. And the cool thing about it, too, is that's, that's human curiosity. That's, that's the way the world, that's how we've discovered everything we know. So it's, it's kind of like instilling back in them what makes us human and curious. All right, for this next row, it says, how does light reflect? So you just engaged in a conversation about what we know about the scattering part, right? Mm -hmm. Now we want you to talk specifically about reflection because that's different. We see something different. We, we saw a lot. So again, same thing, how and why. Like, what is it that actually is happening? How does a reflection occur? So the fact that you touched so the, the mirror how made you realize that it is yeah. like really smooth. Yeah. yeah. How what did you agree with that? That's yeah. We said we can see ourselves yeah. in the mirror, and we know mirrors are actually smooth. That's what I thought. Okay. Isn't that funny how when you touch the paper compared to touching the mirror, like I feel this is smooth, you know what I mean? But it's just really nothing compared. Um, awesome. Okay, so since you guys are at this point, why don't you think of other evidence that we could collect? Um, I'm going to throw another thing out. You know how you guys were talking about in social studies about the Romans and stuff? Yeah. Maybe you can talk about that somehow. And not that it's necessarily evidence, but could you explain that now? You know what I mean? Since you guys are done, try and work together to explain what were the Romans doing that actually made them be able to see they yeah, so what do you think they're doing? Talk about that for a minute, okay? <laughs> First draft talk is what happens for all of us, and you're right, there is this expectation that, um, especially in a classroom, that when I raise my hand and I'm going to say something, that I really know what I'm going to say. And so we've backed up to say, we're all discovering, we're all learning this, and so we need to be able to sit down and talk about what we're seeing and be able to be free to kind of like question it and not necessarily like give your, myself space, myself, and also my peers to just kind of get it out first. And then if I get it out, maybe someone else can kind of restate it or put it together. And so first draft talk is allowing or promoting the students to just get out their ideas and not worry about if it sounds right, not worry if it's perfect, not worry about if it's the most accurate thing. It's okay if we're trying to work through it because it's a leap to take it from here to here and we kind of do the same thing too with our modeling like it's okay if the first model isn't perfect because we're trying to grapple with all of these different components and try and make sense of and explain so it's the whole it's more than even just productive talk and first draft it's the idea that we are discovering and when you discover you don't know the answer as you first start so give yourself that time to grow and learn okay so we have one row left this is the row that's a little bit newer for us. Are you with me? Okay. The first two rows that we were talking about, we feel pretty good about those. We've had a lot of experience. This last one gets to like why it is that we see a reflection. So if you remember, oops, I'm sorry, sweetie. If you remember yesterday, we were talking about how, what's this? A flashlight. A light, a light okay, it's a flashlight. We call this our light source. 
What's this? Object. And what kind of object is a mirror? Reflective. Smooth, reflective. Okay, so we have this flashlight and we're shining it on. And what do we see over there on the wall? The reflection. The reflection. Okay, so what this question is asking us right now is how does that reflection occur? How does that reflection occur? So if you had to put into words, and I started a sentence for you there, but you don't have to use that exact sentence. I want you to try and talk out as a group. How does that reflection get on the wall right there? How is it that a reflection occurs? Do you understand what I'm asking you? You feel good about it? Okay, talk it out with your group. Draw a model if you want. Write down your explanation. Go for it. So the light source goes onto our face, and then the light bounces off of our face into the mirror, and the light from the mirror bounces back up into our eyes. Okay, what do you think? Let me try to draw it out. What do you think? Right here. Right there. Right there. So, do you think right now that the light is just like. Okay. So, if the light is all over the place, then what she said is just a matter of the light kind of lining up at the right place, right? Can you, did you draw that out? Can you draw it bigger? Try and draw it bigger on the back and see if you can, as you're drawing it, try and see if you guys can come to even a consensus here. Does it make sense? So in next generation science standards, our standards are three-dimensional. And so there is this idea that, you know, we want to work towards the fact that our students are learning the content, but the way that they're learning it or even the way that they're demonstrating their knowledge is through this scientific practice, what we would see in a scientific community. And then also that idea that we're teaching them this, this, this cross-cutting concept, this way of looking at the world. So in today's lesson, like there's three different things kind of going on. And so who really knows what's most important? Eh. You know, but they were all sort of working together. So yes, the larger goal is scattering and reflection. That's a content thing. But it's also at the same time that they analyzed their data, that they were arguing from evidence, that there was all these practices that were almost, you know, they are. They're as equally as important as that content because then they'll be able to apply. And then as we were talking today, when we pushed on things like the how, the why, they were getting a, a total relationship between the structure of an object and the way that it functions. And that's something as we get through the rest of the unit, they'll be like, wow, it, it totally depends upon the structure, like the reason that light goes through a window versus, I mean, so we're at that very beginning of stages and understanding that then becomes something that is like an overarching idea that they will carry with them. So right now in our circle, we really want to get out um, a big idea that will go up there. And so you guys can share out what you're thinking and we'll build upon it together. Do you understand? Okay, remember, we all have a responsibility to equally contribute. So I expect you, and I know you can, all of us can share. Do you understand? Yes? And make sure we're basing it upon evidence, and if you need help, remember all of our prompts up there. I respectfully disagree, or I agree, I would like to add. Are you with me? We're going to start our sentence off, or our scientific principle, with scattering occurs, blah, 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 blah. All right? Deanne, do you want to start us off? Yeah. What do you think? Um, scattering occurs in um. When lights hit like an uneven or rough object with something with holes or bumps on it. That's everybody. With something with holes or bumps on it. And so the so when the light um hits the object, will, um depending on how much the bump is will go to a different direction. What do you guys think about that? I agree. I agree. Kind of adding on like it's it bounces like in all different directions, kinda of like, you know, crazy all everywhere rather than like a reflection which is more concentrated. Mm -hmm. well, um, further explaining that, I feel like because it has microscopic bumps all over it, the bumps angle the light in different directions and that's how it scatters everywhere. If, let's say we could see the holes actually. We shine the light at an angle and just go like zigzag into the okay. hole. It wouldn't really be able to like get out like a reflection. Oh, we wouldn't be able to get out. That's an interesting way of putting it. What do you guys think about that? That like, it's not only that it's bumpy, but like the light gets like stuck in there. Like it's it's not able to get out. It's maybe bouncing around, but it can't get out as much. Is that how it like possibly absorbs the light? Like we were talking about earlier. Which is a whole other thing we've been talking about. Like this idea of absorption. We know it kind of happens, but we don't really understand it yet, right? So that's a good thing for us to keep track of. Maybe that does have something to do with it. We don't know. Yes, I agree. I think we should investigate that. That's a good thing. What should she write up there? You tell her what to write, and I'm gonna go tell the next kids. So when the object is rougher. Yeah, I think so. Um, scattering occurs when an object has microscopic bumps on it. 
or, or, or just bumps smooth. in general. Or just bumps. When an object it's has bumps. It's not bumps. smooth though. What does that thing? Oh. Well, well, yeah, if like, an object is not smooth, it has bumps. Well, it doesn't always have to be bumpy. Be like diagonal or yeah, because like we like we do like put has bumps, holes, put, like, or okay. bumps in quotations. Because I remember we were yeah. reading that um, it's kind of a, yeah. we were reading the um, uh, article in our book, mm -hmm. and it said if you uh, circle the um, the mirror up to um, full length where you could see the Pacific Ocean, you'd the smallest bump would be five centimeters. Wow! So it still has a bump. Okay. Nothing can be perfectly smooth. Yeah. Nothing. So, so scattering occurs when an object has bumps or holes, and that causes what? Scattering. scattering. But what is scattering? What do we mean by that? Scattering is light bouncing off in uh, every single direction. Not okay. It can be every single direction, but when like an area is smooth, it will bounce in like a concentrated area. Okay. And not just everywhere. Okay, who could kind of summarize what he said for up there? Go ahead, anyone who feels you can. Um, scattering is um not light going in unison with each other. It's just like in random directions. Okay, so could we say... Um, in random directions, yes. going ran going in random directions. Yeah, um, like goes in random directions because of the microscopic because of what we said. or things, because it sends it off in different directions. Do you want to add something? And then also scattering helps. Uh, scattering is what helps us to see. To see. Well, yeah. it is. Do you want to put that up there? Do you yeah. think that's important? Yeah. 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 Okay. It helps us see. And scattering is what helps us see. Watching the kids start to think about the world around them, and 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 not just thinking of this isolated experiment, you know, that is like yay! It's just it's that moment where the whole point of what we're trying to do is for them to understand the world, for them to question things, to and then when they question it, to try and pursue that answer. The fact that they now just took the things we learned and looked and saw it was it was fantastic. And um, in some of the clips, you'll hear me talk about Rome um, because they came in, they told me about oh my gosh, this is just like what we learned in social studies. Again, it's like that connection to something else that you see happen and you. Um, you're so happy because it's just that like that level indicator like ooh, it's become part of their process not just something they know. When I started teaching the way that we are teaching now it was like oh my gosh this is why I became a teacher because I wanted kids to learn and to love what they were learning and be excited about it and think maybe they could do this for a career I mean it just it was everything that I wanted to be in a teacher I finally saw in my students and it was just the most rewarding experience to see these children be able to feel like it didn't matter who they were. It didn't matter if it didn't matter what vacations they've been on. It just didn't matter. They all had the opportunity to learn science and to feel confident and to be able to share out their knowledge and just excel as little people. It's so amazing and so rewarding to have that experience. So.